All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today let's talk about which is better, gold or silver-coated connectors. Or actually, nickel as the case may be, even though they're silver in color, they're almost always nickel-plated. Um, so first we'll cover nickel and silver. Uh, the reason that we use, or people use nickel instead of silver, is silver corrodes, it turns black, it tarnishes, and that creates a resistive connection. That's not an ideal connection, even though it's a very good conductor. Let's look at the different conductivity of the various metals. Silver is, compared to copper, if we use copper as the baseline, Silver is 105%. It's a better conductor than copper. Copper, our baseline is 100%. I'm just covering the common metals that we use for electronics and connections and such. Uh, gold is 70%, um, which is not as good of a conductor as copper. It's actually a less, less conductive. Um, aluminum, 61%, almost as good as copper, uh, but Aluminum corrodes. It's another metal that conducts well, but corrodes. Gold is wonderful because it, um, it doesn't corrode. It stays shiny. It's very immune to corrosion. Copper corrodes. It turns green. Again, when it's exposed, if you just had copper connectors, they would corrode and they would go bad over time. And, uh, you know, we get crackling or whatever problems. Uh, nickel. Nickel is only 22% but it really is resilient and it's cost effective. It's not expensive like gold is. And then finally, tin. Tin is very common. It's only at 15%, but it's extremely inexpensive and it does not, um, it does corrode a bit. The one way around, if we have a metal that doesn't corrode and we're using it for a connector, we can increase the surface area of the connection. So if we use, let's say, nickel at 22% instead of gold at 70%, well, we could use four times the amount of conducting area and have a better conductor, a better connection than we would with a gold connector using nickel and um, have the lower cost. Um, so gold is king-ish, actually silver's king, copper's really good, but for durability, silver and copper are out. I mean, because of the corrosion, not durability, but for connections. So we're looking at gold. Um, gold is soft. Gold wears out. If you look at gold connectors that have been plugged in with this thin gold plating, over time, they'll get lighter and lighter in color. So we start to wear it out. Um, all of this is not that big of a deal because these conductors, the amount of resistance in most of our connections, XLRs, quarter inch, mini plug, RCA, is significant enough to where if it doesn't corrode, um, it's going to last quite a long time and we're going to play, we're going to have so little loss there that it's irrelevant. But that's not all to the story. We need to look at the bigger issue, which is galvanic corrosion. Galvanic corrosion is when you take two dissimilar metals and you put them next to each, or you put them in contact and you have electricity flowing through them and there's some sort of, um, and it's exasperated by salt water or humidity or, you know, people on boats and marine stuff have extreme uh, challenges with uh, galvanic corrosion. We in the audio world need very good connections and a little bit of galvanic corrosion can actually alter the sound. It can cause connectors. If you've got an old um, mic cable that's been sitting around for a long time, you plug it in and it, it, it doesn't sound quite right. RCA plugs, they do corrode over time. Um, they do create a galvanic connection. They corrode and they create a galvanic connection if there's two dissimilar metals. Let's go ahead and look at that based on the anodic index, if you take two similar metals, there's two identical metals and connect them together, gold and gold, it's got a zero volt loss, a zero volt of, of galvanic corrosion. Um, nickel to nickel, zero volts. Gold to nickel, 0.28 volts. Now that's interesting. So that means that if you have all gold connectors throughout your system, you're all good. 
you're going to have no galvanic corrosion. If you've got all nickel connectors, connectors throughout your system, you have no issues. But when you start using nickel and gold and intermixing them, then you're introducing these galvanic corrosive connections. How big of a deal? Well, we've all plugged in gold to silver, gold to nickel, and everything works fine. But it is there, and over time, it can cause an issue, especially in high humidity salt water environments uh, where you're going to accelerate that. Gold versus tin is 0.45 volts. Now, tin is pretty common on like um, Molex connectors or, um, you know, some of those lower cost um, uh, metal connectors. We have circuit boards stacked and those square pins sticking through. We'll see tin on the, those will be often tin. Um, nickel versus tin is 0.17 volts. Gold versus copper, 0.47 volts. Nickel, copper, 0.19. And copper, tin is 0 0.20. And 10 to 10 is obviously zero. Copper to copper, zero. Um, one last little bit. Uh, the way I got into this was with Rat Sound, our system was built around Crest amplifiers. And we would, uh, they worked great for quite a few years. And then we started having this problem that we called the wake up. And the wake up was you would go to a show and it, everything had worked perfectly the last show and you'd fire up the system and a few of the amp channels wouldn't work. And after a little messing around, we found that if you had turned around backwards and gave it a really nice kick, you kicked the amp hard or you picked the amp rack up and dropped it, it would wake up and then work perfectly, usually for the rest of the show, and um, it would be fine. So we'd mark the amp, take it home, I'd disassemble it, wouldn't find any problem, put it back together, could not recreate the problem, and then put it back together and it'd work for a while and then do the same thing again or another one would do it. Um, fast forward a uh, bit of time and I was reading a book on building computers, on um, you know buying all the parts and putting in, and there was a section on memory where it said that um, you really want to get the same type of metal on the memory card as the computer has on its motherboard. Because if you don't, it'll build up galvanic corrosion. Over time, it'll build up a hard layer which causes the memory to fail and give you glitches. And you pull the memory card out, you slide it in, it scrapes it clean and it'll work for a while and then it'll fail again at some later date. And it wasn't whether it'll fail, it's just a matter of when. And then I was opening an amp not long after that, and I noticed that on the motherboard of the modules on the Crest amps, there was these Molex connectors, and the male connectors had these square gold pins that rose up, and then the, the uh, daughter board that slid on top of it had a female Molex that had tin uh, wipers on it that rode down on top of the uh, gold pins. And I was like, wait a minute. The wake-ups is a galvanic corrosion that's occurring between the dissimilar metals that takes many t years to develop. And then when we disassembled the amp and assembled them back together, we would scrape it clean. And um, that turned out, after I realized that, you could just take an amp that was bad, open it up. You didn't even have to take it apart. You just take it and just wiggle the connection a little bit, and it would work well for a while. And um, um, you know, we don't use the Crest amps anymore. Uh, that was devastating for the manufacturer, the amount of returns they got. Um, and I don't think they ever really solved it. They ended up getting bought by PV. I heard they had pallets of um, returned amps. And um, there was a mistake by a major manufacturer at the time, um, an oversight. Um, you know, between the people that designed it, I don't know. Uh, but very interesting. Um, for us in the audio world, you know, if we're unplugging and plugging things in, it's not going to make much of a difference. Um, but things like guitar pedals, you've got a guitar pedal set that's all Velcroed down to a plate, and they've got numerous uh, quarter inch connectors. And so uh, Guitar Tech has gone out and bought gold pin quarter inches, but they're going into the nickel plated jacks that are on the actual pedals. And then that tours around the world. Um, 
there is a potential issue, you know, that where you get into a show and the guitar is cutting out, you can test it out. I've seen this happen. They unplug everything. And it happens nickel to nickel as well. It, those connections corrode. Um, but to reduce the uh, probability or possibility of corrosive failures or corrosive issues, um, avoid using dissimilar metals. So as far as gold versus nickel, uh, they're both great. The gold wears off a little more. They both make great connections. The quality of these connectors, you know, like Neutrik, are really good. And if you really want to bump it up, I wouldn't switch to gold if you have nickel jacks on the back of your gear. And I wouldn't switch, I would match the gear up. Whatever it is, use the same connector uh, if you really want to optimize. And there's your driving factor for your decision. Cool, cool. Hope that is interesting and thank you for joining me on this video and check out some of my other ones and I'll keep diving into various topics. Awesome. So thank you for hanging out and I hope you found this video and others that I do interesting and informative and check out soundtools.com. Take a look at the products that I personally designed, some solutions for the pro audio industry, uh, analog over Cat5, a bunch of testers, um, and other useful tools. Um, ratsound.com has got our sales department, rental department, install department. Uh, we sell a wide variety of pro audio and AV gear. We do installations, small to large, and we do rentals for Everything as small as local clubs and backyard parties all the way up to Coachella Festival and artists like Pearl Jam, Jack Johnson, Blink-182. And thanks for hanging out.